perspective. This uh, message series, I, I think, is going to be very interesting. I think it's going to be incredible. All right, I'm going to try to do the best job I can anyway. <laughs> We're going to talk about um, some names in Scripture that God, uh, that refers to God. And what we know about God's name basically is, well, don't cuss with it, right? That's kind of what we know about God's name. The, the names in the Bible that are used for God are actually descriptions of who God is. Some of his qualities, some of God's characteristics. And so we're, I'm going to talk about for the next few weeks so that we can understand a little more deeply who God is trying to express himself to be to us. I'm going to go into all that in just a minute, but first I'd like you all to stand up. I'm going to offer a prayer. Um, but first, I, I, know, I know how you all are doing this morning. I can, I can tell. So what I'd like you to do, we're going to, we're going to help each other wake up uh, face the inner aisle, face this inner aisle, and uh, massage the person's back in front of you. Give them a nice little massage. Nice little massage. Okay, whisper something nice into their ear. All right, now turn around and face the outside. Face the outside and, and give that person a massage. Okay, okay, now everybody face here and, and one at a time come up here. <laughs> Let me offer a word of prayer before you sit down. Unless you have weak knees from skiing or something, you know. Don't you, don't you want to know some things? I, you know, you, you crave knowledge about some things. But don't you wish you could erase some things you do know? I mean, like, is it really necessary for us to know all the ins and outs of the Kardashian family? Is it really that important for us? But most of you in this room know more about them than you might about the people who live right next door to you. Some of you might know about Katy Perry and Russell Brand. They're getting a divorce, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and it is sad when human beings hurt. But you might know, some of you might know more about some of the divorces in this past year than the people on your block or in your church who might be hurting. D don't you wish we could erase some of the things we do know and put in some things that might be more important to know? That's really what this series is about. Just to try and put in your mind and heart some things that the Bible says, this is who God is. But really more than that, this is who God is trying to be to you. Can you make room for that? Are you willing to make room for that? I have nothing against the Kardashians and Katy Perry, and I really have nothing against them. They are people loved by God. But I need to take some things out that I don't really need to know that much about and put in some things that might be a little more important. God, I pray that you would hide me in your shadow. 
and you would still my voice so that your voice is louder that what we see and hear this morning that you would take my words form them in your spirit and speak to us what we need to hear in Jesus name Amen. Please be seated. I read this past week in an email that I get. Ask.com. You ever know what ask.com is? Ask.com from January through November this last year um, asked their 60 million followers, uh, what do you think is going to happen in this next year? What, is, what are the big trends going to happen in 2012? And here are some of the things that 60 million people are focused in on. Uh, George Clooney will win his second and third Academy Award. So for half of us in this room, we get to look at George Clooney at least a couple more times. Thank you very much. <laughs> The Green Bay Packers, I'm sorry to all of you Browns, Bengals, and other fans, are going to win the Super Bowl for the second time. <laughs> and this one is for Tim H. <laughs> McDonald's is going to add the McRib to their regular menu year-round. <laughs> Here's another one. Apparently, the name Pippa, for the rest of you in the room, is going to be in the top 10 list of baby names. Sounds a little too close to pimple for me, but that's beside the point. <laughs> Facebook is going to launch the world's largest IPO. That one I think I believe. I was reading USA Today few days ago, I think, and they came up with New Year's resolutions that we'd like to see, they said. That's, that was the title of it, New Year's resolutions we'd like to see. They said that we'd like to see American politicians make the New Year's resolution to stop promising low taxes and high benefits. For the American voter, they said we'd like to see the American voter make the resolution to stop electing politicians who promise low taxes and high benefits. For President Obama, I'm going to do both sides of the aisle, so just be calm out there. For President Obama, they said they would like him to make the resolution to get serious about preventing the United States from turning into Greece. For Rick Perry, they said that they would like him to make the resolution that whenever he has three talking points that he writes them on the palm of his hand. <laughs> and for former, uh, I'm, I'm just reporting the news here. And for former Representative Anthony Weiner, they would like him to cancel his Twitter account. I'm just reporting the news. And I'll do one more. Many of these I cannot do. For actor Alec Baldwin, they would like him to give up words with friends or flying or both. To learn about things that are important means that we need to set aside some things that are less important. You and I only have so much mental capacity. I know some of you are thinking right now, and yes, yours is less than mine, but that's beside the point. I want to talk to you this morning about one passage of scripture that highlights, I think, 
the powerful name of God and how I would just like to introduce this series. Basically, in this next month, I'm going to try to move us past the idea that God is just some kind of being out there with general qualities. And toward the idea that God in Scripture is represented by certain qualities that can help us do life. That God is not just some amorphous being out there, but God is the one who created us and wants to recreate us and wants to infuse in us the ability to do life every day. At school and at work and in relationships, God has the capacity to form our life in such a way that 2012 can end. And we can look back and we can say, I know God more deeply. I value God more highly. And I love God more truly. The passage I'm talking about will give you a bit of a jolt because we just finished the Christmas story. And I'm going to jump back into the book of Exodus. Indeed, Exodus chapter 3. So I'm going to go back to Charlton Heston at the burning bush while he was watching his flocks. He had left Egypt, he had been kicked out of Egypt, and he had fleed. Listen to chapter 3. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led, to the, he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire within a bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire, but it was not being consumed. So Moses thought, I'm going to go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called out to Moses, 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 and Moses answered, Here I am. Do not come any closer, Moses, God said. Take off your sandals, because the place where you now walk is holy ground. Then he said to Moses, I am the God of your fathers. I am the God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob. And at these words, Moses hid his eyes because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said these words. I have seen the misery of my people. I've heard them crying out because of the slave drivers. And I am concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hand of Egypt, to bring them up to the land flowing with milk and honey. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me. And I've seen the way that they are treated by the Egyptians, oppressing them. So now I'm going to send you to Pharaoh and bring my people home. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said to him, I will be with you. I will be with you. We just heard that last week. Emmanuel, God is with us. Sometimes I hear people say that the God in the Old Testament and the God in the New Testament are different. I don't think so. 
God said, I will be with you. This will be a sign to you that it is I that have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and I say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me. And they ask me, what is his name? We're coming to the point. What is his name? Who is this God? What should I tell them? And God says to Moses, I am who I am. That is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Now, those of us that are willing to admit the truth, that is a strange answer. Those of us that are willing to admit up front, okay, God, what is your name? And God says, I am. What? Just tell them, I am that I am sent me. You want me to tell them that you're a verb? <laughs> I am that I am. But if you dig a little bit deeper, and I promise just a little deeper, you don't have to go into a lot of Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic, you don't have to go to seminary, you don't have to do all that jazz. All you have to do is scratch beneath the surface and understand that God was indeed, indeed telling them, yes, tell them I am a verb. A verb is action. A verb moves forward. A noun is a person, place, or thing. Didn't know you were getting this lesson in church this morning, did you? A noun is the name of a person, place, or thing. And they lived in a society in which gods, small g, were defined as the god of the river, or the god of the mountain, or the god of the trees, or the god of the ocean. And all those gods used to fight together all the time. You had to appease this god so this god wouldn't get hacked off. And this God, Big G, says, don't try to pin me in like them. I am not the God of that. I'm not the God who sits there. I'm not the God you have to appease in that way. I am the one I am. Yes, I know, but what is your name? Moses. And Moses says, I'm here. And God says, I am too. You have to hear that part. Moses is searching for God's identity. And, and God is trying to say, don't pigeonhole me into one particular way of being with you. Don't pigeonhole me like you pigeonhole the God of the sea or the God of the trees or the God of the rocks. I, I'm, I'm all of that. I'm not a God you can name and put in his place. That's the God of the trees. If I don't want to make the God of the trees mad, well then don't go in the forest. If I don't want to make the God of the river mad, well then don't pollute the river. But if I want to understand who God is, then I have to listen to his name. What is your name? I am that I am. Which means you can't corner me. You can't pigeonhole me. You can't say he's that God over there because he, he's, he's here too. 
this is, I want you to hear this. This is the disease of American Christianity. Claiming God is the God in church on Sunday morning, but don't have him travel with me down the hallways at school. He's the God that I talk about at church and in my small groups and in my Bible studies and when I'm doing good work, but he's, don't, don't tell me he's the God over my parenting too. We are still trying to pigeonhole God. And what is worse is, and, and I, just, I, I, just, I just need to say this, we, we, are the, we, we, we in the society have placed God as either sometimes even as either red or blue. If, if you vote a certain way, you, you are certainly more godly. I don't see that. That's pigeonholing God. And I recognize that half of you just left me. But the church is not to pigeonhole God into red or blue. The church is to rise above red or blue. The church is to be the one that mixes red and blue together and comes out with the rainbow of possibilities. Moses asks God, who is it that I'm supposed to say is sending me? And God says, I am that I am is the one that is sending you. Don't not tell them that it's the God of the mountains or the God of this place or even the God over here that is just for us. Where did Jesus say God was just for us? And I'll, I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you why this is so, so important. Jesus got in trouble a lot. He was like, he was just trouble. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Jesus was just, he's just getting in trouble. He's hanging out with sinners. He's calling the church people hypocrites. You know, he's just, it's just obnoxious sometimes. But Jesus got in the most trouble when he said the words, I am. Claiming the identity of God. Read scripture. That's when Jesus got in real trouble. So these words, I am, are, are not just verbiage. It's the very identity of God which you cannot pigeonhole into your way of thinking my way of voting, our way of doing church. God is not some trifling spirit that we can control. In the end, we either ask God to move us or we need to get out of the way. God is saying, I am all in. God is asking, are you all in? God is saying, I am all in. God is asking, are you all in? Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I'm God. How can we ever be still and know that we are fully the God I am, the one who fully is, if you and I are so busy with our we must do life? 
to know God fully is to choose the ego of John the Baptist. Remember what John the Baptist said one time? Some of John the Baptist's followers were not really excited that Jesus was beginning to get more press than John the Baptist. John the Baptist had been around. He had been doing church for years, and the crowds had been coming out to see him. And this Nazareth guy comes along, and he starts taking people away, and people start getting excited about him. And there's no pastor and no church worth his salt that doesn't get a little wounded by that. If we're truthful. So they had a little bit of a meeting and John the Baptist's followers said, hey, man, we, we have to put up some new slides and we better get the drum set and we better get some things going here because they're going over to Jesus. And John the Baptist who did what most of us couldn't do when our ego is attacked. John the Baptist, chapter, uh, John chapter 3, verse 30 says this. He must become greater, and I must become less. Okay, come on now, friends. Very seldom do you and I walk through life anywhere and say, let them have the glory. Let them get the press. I just want to serve behind the scenes. But if you really want to know the God that am, if you really want to know the God that is all that, then the first thing we got to do is deal with our ego a little bit. And for some of us, maybe we got to deal with our ego a lot. God speaks. I am. It's where the name of God, Yahweh, comes from. You may have heard the name Yahweh. Simply Hebrew, phonetical, spent thousands in seminary, could tell you a lot more about that. But it really doesn't matter. What really matters is, will you listen to the name? I am. Because here's the deal, and I'm going to close. Every one of us, at some point, is going to ask God in the quiet of our own life, Maybe at the loss of a loved one. Maybe at the shattering of a relationship. Maybe when the finances tank. Maybe when you're just so busy, so busy, so busy, and you realize, what, what am I so busy for? Maybe somebody at school has pigeonholed you with certain names. All, all, all of us, at some point, are just going to say, so God... Who are you? And you're going to get the same answer that Moses got. I am. You don't need more than that. You just need me, is what God is saying. But I want more. I want to make sure you can control the mountains and my finances. I want to make sure you can control the relationships and the rivers. I want to make sure you can control. And God is saying, like he said to Moses, you let me take care of all that stuff. You, you just come be with me. Why? Because I am. I am expresses God's 
verbness, his dependability, his reliability, his faithfulness. How you respond defines your reliability, dependability, faithfulness. The ground you are on right now is also holy ground. Not because we use it as a church. But because God is here. Really. God is here. For a minute, I'm going to ask you to be in silent prayer and just pray and ask God so who are you and listen because he might just say I am I invite you to be in prayer for a moment Will you stand for the closing prayer? And Moses said to God, suppose I go and do this. And I say to them, God has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Suppose I walk down the hallway at school and I am challenged to compromise my beliefs. Who should I hold on to? Suppose I am walking through life and my finances are less than tanked. Who should I say I can hold on to? Suppose the relationships around me are crumbling. Suppose the doctor has given me news that I can do nothing about. Suppose you fill in the blank. Suppose that is going on in my life. What should I say I'm holding on to? You say, I'm holding on to the God who is. Not the God who was. Not the God who might be. But for right now, I'm holding on to the God who is. this day hold on to the God who is just this day 